computer basics. Now the purpose of this video is to give you a high level overview of a lot of the things that we're going to cover in more detail, detail throughout the rest of the series. So we're going to cover such things as basic functions of the PC, what are the four main things that a PC does, and what it's actually really, really good at. We'll talk about case types, or the types of cases and form factors of cases that you're likely to come across out in the field, and also that you'll just need to be aware of for the A-plus exam. Talk about external connections. What types of things can you plug into your PC, in other words? The different ports, what they look like, so you can identify them by sight. We'll also talk about internal connections. Again, looking at what some of these things are, so that you get a, a basic overview of them, an introduction, and also can identify them by sight. Then we'll also take a look at, at a standard toolkit that an A-plus technician is likely to have, you should have in your, in your bag. And also ESD, or electrostatic discharge, again a high level overview of what it is and how we can prevent it and basically why you, you want to eliminate it at all costs from your work environment. So let's go ahead and start off with basic functions of the computer. Okay now when we talk about computers and the basic functions of a computer there are really four things that every computer does whether it's a Mac or you're running Linux or Windows or it's a maybe a laptop or a desktop or even a room sized supercomputer they all do the four basic things and that is they handle input they handle output processing and storage. So, if we dig into each of these areas a little more, what are some types of input? Well, some obvious ones that come to mind would be your keyboard, as you type things into the, into the uh, computer. How about a mouse? Could even be a drawing tablet, like I'm using right now, to draw on screen. I'm inputting information. Could be a modem, we could do a little bit of a stretch here and say that a modem brings information into the computer, so that's inputting things. How about a microphone? Again, something I'm using now. So there are lots of different ways we can get information into the computer. Touch screen. Okay, the list can go on and on as we develop new technologies. For output, probably the one that comes to mind most quickly would be your monitor could also be speakers. How about maybe a printer? And again, we do a little bit of a stretch here and a modem because we can send information, we can output information through a modem. So there's lots of different ways again for input and output. Processing, that one's kind of self-explanatory. That's where our CPU comes in, the central processing unit. And that's going to do the number crunching and basically just take all the data that we're working with and process it in some form or fashion. Control, for the most part, the, everything that the, that the computer does. And then we have storage. Now storage can come in, uh, also in a number of fashions. We have magnetic media, which can be hard disks, floppy disk, things along those lines. We can use optical storage which might be a CD or a DVD we can use flash memory for like a flash drive or a jump drive or a thumb drive whatever you want to call it they have a couple of different names but there's many different ways that we can store information okay so all of these things all break down to the four basic categories and these are this is something that you'll just need to kind of internalize just for your own knowledge and also for the exam and that is input output processing and storage now already now something else that pretty much every computer has in common is it has to be housed in something <laughs> all right we don't just have a bunch of parts laying there on our desk kind of strewn together with some wires they all sit in some type some type of case so we have computer cases and they have a few the main distinctions. So let's take a look at some of them. We have basically a desktop type PC and then we have some type of a tower PC. Now there are different variations within these groupings. We have desktops, we can have larger size desktops, we can have small form factor, 
You can have slim, slim line. They're all roughly the same uh, look and feel, though. Maybe a variation in size. And then we have tower cases, and we have mini towers, mid, and full size. Again, roughly the same form factor. And when I say the word form factor, I'm basically referring to the physical makeup or the physical layout of that device or that piece of equipment. For, uh, motherboards can have a form factor, desktops can have a form factor, pretty much anything that has the ability to come in different shapes and sizes has a form factor. So with a desktop, and I'll show you some pictures in just a moment, we have the types of PCs where they just sit on a desk and then you have uh, maybe a floppy and a CD-ROM and your hard drive sitting somewhere internal to the case and your monitor a lot of times will sit on top of the PC. Okay, and you'll have your keyboard and all that good stuff. Okay, your little mouse out to the side. A tower, on the other hand, usually sits on the floor and will either contain maybe two or three drive bays for some expansions, maybe a floppy and your power, or it could be a full tower, which is much taller and will contain many more drive bays. Just basically the same type of setup just allows for more expandability and allows you to have more components inside the case. Okay, now as an example, here we have two PCs, different form factors. Alright, these both happen to be an HP DC5100 PC. One happens to be a small form factor desktop and one is a micro tower. As far as their capabilities, pretty much identical as far as uh, the things that it has inside, pretty much identical. Both have an optical drive, both have a floppy disk, both have USB ports and audio ports on the front, two USB ports, audio ports. So the real difference is just the layout of or the configuration of uh, the case. Motherboard sits inside, same as it sits inside here. We can plug expansion cards into this, uh, maybe a, a network card or a modem or an additional video card or, or whatever the case might be. It can, can be plugged in, into the slots in the back here, same as it can be plugged into the slots in the back here. Okay, now if we look inside of a case, here I have a case with the side removed, a side panel removed, and inside you can see pretty much everything has been taken out of here, but when you break it down, it's basically just a metal box or uh, a, a, some type of metal housing with a plastic outer outer casing. So in this instance, we have our motherboard that would sit in this area here. We have some case fans that would blow air through the PC. We have our hard drives. We would plug into this area. Hard disks would actually just sit right into here, and they would bolt on to either side of the case on both sides. This is our drive bays where we would put such things as maybe a CD or a DVD. We might have multiples. We could uh, insert a floppy disk drive or maybe a uh, some type of audio components or some, some front-loading USB ports, whatever the case might be. So all of these things, these little panels here, would actually come out. They're called blanks. They just pop out and then in, the, in its place would be a hole. And then we would just go ahead and slide our our drive bay in there. So it allows us to add additional components as necessary. Um, case fans are normally in the front, there's a couple in the back, and I'll look at we'll look at the back of the PC here in just a moment. But I just want to show you that when you break it down inside of a PC, nothing really that frightening. Uh, sometimes it can be daunting when you're very first getting into the industry and you think there's this massive amount of wires.